In this video, we're going to talk about extraneous solutions. If you've never heard the term before, I encourage you to review some videos on Khan Academy on extraneous solutions. But just as a bit of a refresher, it's the idea that you do a bunch of legitimate algebraic operations, you get a solution or some solutions at the end, but then when you test it in the original equation, it doesn't satisfy the original equation. And so the key of this video is why do extraneous solutions even occur? And it all is due to the notion of reversibility. There's certain operations in algebra that you can do in one direction, but you can't, and it'll always be true in one direction, but it isn't always, the tr it isn't always true in the other direction. And I'll show you those two operations. One is squaring and the other is multiplying both sides by a variable expression. So let's see the example of squaring, and then we're going to see it in a, an actual scenario where you're dealing with an, extra, with an extraneous solution. So we know, for example, that if A is equal to B, I could square both sides, and then A squared is going to be equal to B squared. But the other way is not true. For example, if A squared is equal to B squared, it is not always the case that A is equal to B. What's an example that shows that this is not always the case? Actually, pause the video, try to think about it. Well, negative two squared is indeed equal to two squared, but negative two is not equal to two. So this shows that you can square the both sides of both, you can square both sides of an equation and get and deduce something that is true, but the other way around is not necessarily going to be true. Another non-reversible operation sometimes is multiplying both sides by a variable expression. So multiplying both sides, actually like I said that I guess confused, it looks like an x. Multiply both sides by variable. I'll just write variable, but it could be a variable expression as well. For example, we know that if A is equal to B, that if we multiply both sides by a variable, that's still going to be true. X A is going to be equal to X B. But the other, the reverse, isn't always the case. If X A is equal to X B, is it always the case that A is equal to B? Well, the simple answer is no, and I always encourage you, pause this video and see if you can find a, an example where this doesn't work. Well, what if, the if A was two and B is three and the variable X just happened to take on the value zero? So we know that zero times two is indeed equal to zero times three, but two is not equal to three. Now, how does all of this connect to the extraneous solutions you've seen when you're solving radical equations or when you're solving some rational or equations with rational expressions on both sides? Well, let's look at an example. Let's, look, let's solve a radical equation. If I wanted to solve the equation, the square root of 5x minus four is equal to x minus two, a typical first step is, hey, let's get rid of this radical by squaring both sides. So I am going to square both sides, and then I'm going to get 5x minus four is equal to x squared minus four x plus four. Once again, if this looks completely unfamiliar to you, we go into much more depth in other videos where we introduce the idea of radical equations. And let's see, we can subtract 5x from both sides. We can add four to both sides. I'm just trying to get a zero on the left-hand side. And so I'm going to be left with zero is equal to x squared minus nine x plus eight, or zero is equal to x minus eight times x minus one, or we could say that x minus one is equal to zero, or x minus eight is equal to zero. We get x equals one, or x equals eight. So let's test these solutions. If x equals eight, we would get, and I'll color code it a little bit, for x equals eight, if I test it in the original equation, I get the square root of 36 is equal to six, which is absolutely true, so that one works. But what about x equals one? I get the square root of five times one minus four is one, is equal to one minus two, which is equal to negative one. That did not work. This right over here is an extraneous solution. 
If someone said, what are all the x values that satisfy this equation, you would not say x equals 1, even though you got there with legitimate algebraic steps. And the reason that is true is, actually pause this video, look back. For which of these steps does x, equals one, x equal 1 still work, and what step does it not work? Well, you'll see that x equals 1 works for all of these equations below this purple line. It just doesn't work for the square root of 5 minus 4x is equal to x minus 2. In fact, you can start with x minus 1, and then you could deduce all the way up to this line here. But the issue here is that squaring is not a reversible operation. This is analogous to saying, hey, we know that a squared is equal to b squared. We know that this is equal to this. But then that doesn't mean that a is necessarily equal to b for x equals 1. And we could do the same thing with a, a rational or an equation that deals with rational expressions. So for example, we might have to deal with, and let me make sure I have some space here. If I had to solve x squared over x minus 1 is equal to 1 over x minus 1, the first thing I might want to do is multiply both sides by x minus 1. So multiply, multiply by x minus 1. Now notice, I'm multiplying both sides by a variable expression, so we have to be a little bit conscientious now. But if I multiply both sides by x minus 1, I'm going to get x squared is equal to 1. Or I could say that x equals 1 or x is equal to negative 1. But we could test these. For x equals 1, if I go up here, I, I'm dividing by 0 on both sides. So this is an extraneous solution. The key here is that we multiplied both sides by a variable expression. In this case, we multiplied both sides by x minus 1. You can do that. You can multiply both sides by a variable expression. And it is a legitimate algebraic operation. It's completely analogous to what we saw right over here. Just because 0 times 2 is equal to 0 times 3 does not mean that 2 is equal to 3. It's completely analogous because we multiplied by a variable expression that actually takes on the value 0 when x is equal to 1. So the big takeaway here is hopefully you understand why extraneous solutions happen a little bit more. When you square, when you multiply both sides by a variable expression, completely legitimate as long as you do it properly. But it's not always the case that the reverse is true. You can add or subtract anything from both sides of an equation, and that's always going to be reversible. And so you don't, that's not going to lead to extraneous solutions. You can multiply or divide by a non-zero constant value. That's also not going to lead to anything shady. But if you're squaring both sides or multiplying both sides by variable expression, you should be a little bit careful.